Hello and welcome. Once again, my name is Magnus, Magnus Oraka. Uh, some few days ago, I made a video, and that video was primarily centered on uh, uniting the people of the Southeast region. In that video, I tried as much as possible to point out different aspects or different perspectives where this disunity is emanating from. Uh, as you can see, I, in that video, I spared no narrative or no perspective. And that is with a view to uh, honestly try as much as possible to point out areas that we need to work on with a view to fostering a long-lasting unity among the people of the entire Southeast region. And uh, the, the people of the Igbo extraction got most of the punch from that video. Today's video, we're going to look at another perspective. And the, the central point also is to attempt to bring everybody together, but this time from the other perspective and then that is the the, the other people that constitute uh the what you describe as the riverine area or the south south area which i which is which is a fallacy a divisive nomenclature created by the caliphate or the niger data now get this straight i am an robo man i am very very proud of my heritage and nothing whatsoever will make me wish to be anything less and after that video i had quite a lot of um, <coughs> comment some very positive some retrogressive like that there's a guy one emmanuel Ove, who said my mother is a prostitute for contemplating the idea that the southeast and south south can come together and he said never they will never come Come, come together and I felt so ashamed because I'm not angry because such comments will actually come from uh, a great depth of ignorance so our job here is to try as much as possible to bridge uh, if possible to dissipate the ignorance that pervades the entire southeast um, region there's also an encounter I also had with um, uh, somebody who, who the guy is in our club I play a lot of Scrabble, he's in our club and then I said hey, show you Igbo he said no I'm not Igbo ah, but you speak Igbo every time and I said ah, yes but I'll be Delta Igbo and, and, and I saw that the, the division in the south is, is, is far more complex than we already think and for the first time I can see the frustration of, 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 the, of the Igbo speaking extraction from that region it is really funny that you see somebody who speaks the same language as you do but says he's not part of you something must be wrong somewhere and we need to we need to tackle this thing with a view to bringing people together because the earlier and fast we get the people together the better for us <coughs> excuse me now if you, i i in all honesty i see the Igbos are actually stretching a hand of friendship but for some reason there is a, a great distrust from the other people so we will tackle all these things as we as we attempt to you know point everything now the first like i said uh, one of the first thing the caliphate did was to obstruct our identity and a lot of people from the niger data region have somehow imbibed that separate uh, separative agenda of the of the caliphate to identify us differently I, I'm not saying one should jettison his heritage. Like I said from the beginning of this video, I am an Urobo man I, and I'm very proud of my culture. I'm very proud of my heritage. But I cannot be proud of a heritage and culture that refuses to see the importance and advantage of unity with his neighbor. Particularly now that we have an impending tsunami of the Islamic agenda that, that has an objective to subjugate the rest of us. So I, I feel bad that rather than us put our eye on the big picture, we, we, we tend to spend our time on, on trivialities that <laughs> that bear no little or, or absolutely no significance to the bigger picture of the caliphate that is um, that is uh, that is ahead. So 
The Niger Deltans prefer the regional identity that has been carved out for them by the Caliphate. And I'm wondering, are these people really the same people like me? Why do I think differently and they don't think the way I do? Now, in honestly, we should forgive them because they don't travel. They have not traveled. Like, they don't have the advantage that I have for intermingling with people of the northern extraction. Like I said in some of my videos, believe me when I tell you that I have traveled so far and, you know, mixed with them. So I know them very, very well. Believe me when I tell you that there is no way we can establish love between them and us. And their ultimate goal is to go into us and take everything that belongs to us. If it were possible to push the whole Niger Delta that are clo close to the riverine area into the sea, believe me, they would do that. So, why is it so easy for a man to think that just because you describe yourself Niger Delta, you are different from the Igbo man? That is, I, I don't know that there is some, some psychological thing, but something came to me that after the war, when the war uh, finished uh, and it was, forget that Gowan said there was no, uh, no victor, no vanquish, but we know definitely well that the Igbos were actually reduced to a, a ridiculous state of hunger and all of that. So they, were the one, they, they were the losers. They lost a lot of lives and they lost a lot of lives. But then there was also one thing. There was the stigma. There was the stigma. Particularly in the north, you, you hear description like Iyamiri Bamutu, which means Igbo man is nobody. Iyamiri Amuti Akari. That means we finish all Igbo. So you could see the stigma. And then for the nature of the Igbo man to want to you know, rise from the ashes. You find they went, they, they had to break through the limits to become somebody. That's why you find a lot of them almost everywhere you go because they needed to rebuild. And rebuild they have. Now, for somebody who, who we all thought you have conquered and all of a sudden they are, they are now back to reckoning, there's a tendency that people will perceive them as an, an intimidating identity and so pathetic is it to say i mean one is feeling sorry that people will identify or have this erroneous fear that uh okay let me not jump let me not jump the point here but that you call yourself niger data let me tell you it is easier for the ego man to go and leave the caliphate than for niger data to go the also man will kill himself. In fact, blood will spill for Niger Delta to live. The reason why the, the, the Caliphate does not want the Igbo to live, it's not because they love the Igbo so much. It is because of the, uh, kata, uh, the chain reaction or the chain effect because if the Igbo lives, it will encourage the Niger Delta to go. If the Niger Delta go, forget the fake relation, uh, marriage between the Southwest and the Southeast. The Southwest will go. If the Southwest goes, the Middle Belt will go. If the Middle Belt go, the other Christian enclave within the Caliphate will also agitate to be different. So, in truth, it is the Igbo nation that is holding Nigeria together. Because if the Igbo go, the Igbo man is like a plug to a leak. If you remove the Igbo, everything about Nigeria will leak away. So I, I indulge the viewer to be patient to the end because you cannot discuss some of the intricacies of Nigeria without exhausting a lot of time. So now the second point here is this. I have also noticed how how does an Igbo man who lives in the South East say he's not an Igbo man? Now it is the psychological makeup of those who live in the coastal the coastal area. Like an Urobo man. If I meet another robo man, he say, "Who uh, you are from? Where?" I tell the person that you are on robo. He's not satisfied. He wants to know which part of robo. I say, "Okay, from uh, Okpara." He's not satisfied. He wants to know which uh, which village. I tell him from uh, Okoroba. He's not satisfied. He wants to know which compound. I tell him from Oraka compound. He's not satisfied. He wants to know who is my father. You see that divisionary tendency, that self-imposed divisionary tendency that we tend to you know miniaturize ourselves we tend to want to psychologically we tend to want to break away from a whole to a smaller identity and by moving to a smaller identity 
we tend to break the ability to become a whole, to represent a force to the foe, to the enemy that wants to crush us. I hope, I hope I'm making a point here. The idea. So it is. It is not particular with the the, the Igbo, Igbo person. So if you are an Igbo man and you are living in the southeast, you are speaking Igbo like the other Igbo people from Anambra, and you say you are not Igbo. Certainly, there must be something with the way you are calibrated. I really, I can't fathom it because <clears throat> over here, they see everybody, the one who says is Igbo or not Igbo, the one who doesn't even understand Igbo but shares the same culture, the one who says doesn't share the same culture but say, shares the same region, they classify all of us as Igbo. So if the enemy can see all of us as a single identity, it is very foolish and stupid for the rest of us not to aggregate our collective cultures, our collective regions, our collective dialects, and put up a strong unifying front of identity. So I think the stupidity that says we should miniaturize ourselves for that should stop. You get me? Then the, 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 thought, the, the thought stereotype that most Niger debtors have towards the Igbo is the, is the concept of we oil. Ah, now we get oil, now we get oil, now we go. That is the most foolish comment I hear from most Niger Deltas. <coughs> Excuse me. That is the most foolish comment I've heard from most Niger Deltas. Because which oil? That is we oil. The same oil that the caliphate determines who owns oil block. Who gets what? Who, who gets uh, which percentage and what percentage? Is it the same oil you describe as your own? Because whoever wants to get a block, a, a oil block, the people in the south are not the ones who determine who gets what. So how is the oil yours? Now it is it is so funny that you can protect your oil from the evil man, but <laughs> the same oil you are protecting from the evil man is not in your control. It's in the control of the outside man. What kind of stupidity is this? This is a unique and uncanny type of foolishness that lacks a word in the dictionary to describe. So. You don't have any oil. Is it not in this same region that somebody from Bauchi, for example, from Gombe or Bauchi, is saying that the oil in Bayasa belongs to the people of Bauchi? That is a, 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 a son of the caliphate that has no oil in his region. Holding claim and coming to the public for to say that the oil in Bayasa is your own. So which we oil? We oil, we oil that you so fervently want to defend from the Igbo man. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that uh, I'm looking for a favor from Igbo man. God forbid bad thing that I will sell my culture. If I want favor right now, I only need to turn my social media page in support of the caliphate and I'm rich overnight. But my conscience is not for sale. I'd rather be a proper for the rest of my life than sell my conscience to, the, to, to anybody. But I am driven by a strong desire for the entire southeast to be united because a snake cannot swallow what is bigger than how much it can't expand its head so if we become bigger and more united the the caliphate cannot control us but we have segmented ourselves so much that it can send python down to deal with the evils and because the other segments see that the Igbos are not part of them. They don't stay aside why they deal with the Igbos. But if we see ourselves as one, the removal of the CJM will cause a cataclysmic reaction in the region and therefore it will, but they see that when they do something to our region, the origin other region say it doesn't belong to it's not just so the whole concept of we oil is a false, is a fallacy and a foolish dream. And such a dream is perpetuated by the 13% derivation that the caliphate hands over to us. So, then let's have and then the, the, the other one I want to talk about is this is, 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 is the fear that in, 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 a, in a unity that will eventually come, the Igbos will dominate us. How can an Igbo man dominate me? How? Where? In what market? Have, is it possible? Uruguay gets sense. Ibu man gets sense. Rather than this unnecessary fear, we form an alliance and begin to determine how we are going to stay. We've already said that when we come together, everybody is going to be in charge of his resources. How then will it will it, will, will, will it Ibu man be dominate me? How? But I seek for a region 
of unity with the Igbo man because I believe in numbers. They say politics is a game of numbers, not a game of region or game of identity or game of where you come from. It is a game of number. Those with more numbers control and, and dominate or threaten or in, intimidate those with lesser numbers. That is politics. So I suggest the people of the South East should come together, find a way to, to harmonize our differences and form a, a, a united force. That is the only way the North, the Caliphate will begin to take us seriously. Anything short of that, Niger Delta Development Forum. Uh, uh, I've seen some people in some comments that say, let the, let the five core Igbo state just go. My bro, it won't work. It won't work. Niger Delta, let Niger Delta go. You want to take the oil that the Caliphate says it is his oil. You want to go with it, you will die on top. If it is the caliphate that I know that are saying you you that Niger Delta will form their own country, they will die to make sure that oil don't don't go. You understand me? If there is a promise that if Igbo goes, the the data Niger Delta will not go. Believe in me. The next two minutes they will say Igbo go, but they know the chain reaction effect. That is why they want to keep the Igbos in line, not because of love. So I, I hope I'm making a. Um, uh, and this. then the final first stereotype I see is I see when you talk to somebody from the south, 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 the next thing he does is he arms himself with grammar. And you see, actually, uh, the my understanding of the Nigerian polity is, a, is an undulating perception that completely uh, underscores the underpinnings of the Nigerian. Uh, uh, choreographed uh, sentimentalities such that uh, the crinkle crackle you have spent three minutes of all the grammars you can say without saying nothing because you are more interested in people saying that you are educated you are educated so what your resources are gradually filtering away to the to the caliphate so to wrap up this video so that I can settle down on my cherished Gouda. <laughs> uh, sometimes we have to make this thing funny so that inside the joke we can take this thing seriously. So that we don't see what we, 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 I can't kill myself for stress. So after stressing myself, I take the Gouda to calm down my stress. So what we are saying is this. I am an Roboman. Proudly an Roboman. Proudly. An robo man can never be any other person than an robo man. But I know individualization of the region will make us continuously more vulnerable to the resolved caliphate that is bent on making us slaves. I know that if I align the robo with the Shekiris, with the Aquarius, with the Edo, with the Igbos, we form a so this small small we, 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 there's a bigger threat in front and yet we narrow down our, our, our seriousness to petty petty small small internal that we can settle if we are free eventually if you are not attuned to the fight for freedom I want to be a free man I cannot be in a place where somebody tells me what to drink or what not to drink are you aware that a nightclub was brought down just because somebody wore a hijab in a country you describe as secular country. If you don't hate this country, I do, man. I do. What the fuck is wrong with all of you? Yes, fuck. We all do it. So, in fact, I thank you very much. Bye-bye. When they took you from Africa and they banned you from being called Kunta Kenti, Rasul, or Muhammad. That's right. When they took us on that westerly course, then they forced us into their names. Teach, teach. And they called us Smith, Jones, Robinson, Green, Brown, Hog, Hog. A black man called Mr. White. And when we go to China, listen. And we put our passport down, and the Chinese immigration uh, uh, control official looks at that passport and he sees Mr. White. He expects to see a white man. And when he sees the black man, he says, uh oh, this man doesn't know who he is. That's right. That's right.
But many of us as black people today, we're very foolish people. That's right. Because we don't understand why another man gives you his name. Because when he gives you his name, the giving of another's name denotes possession. It means he owns you. As long as you're walking in another man's name, he knows he owns you. You can talk as strong as you like. Yeah, I'm for black. I'm a, yeah, Mrs. White. Yeah, they're laughing at you because they know that when you take another's name, that's why in marriage, in the tradition of marriage, the woman takes the man's surname go ahead, go ahead. and leaves her maiden name because that taking of the other's name denotes possession. In the event of divorce, you don't walk around with the other man's name. You now relinquish that name because you're no longer with that one. Go ahead. What brings about insecurity is when you have a false concept of yourself. Mm -hmm. And the false concept of self is white supremacy. They believe that they are better because they are white. And as a result, see, when a man has that kind of silly mentality, Hitler had the silly mentality that the white man, the Aryan, is superior. So then at the Olympics, Jesse Owens, kicks up all the Aryans. Mm. Hitler is outraged. He's angry. The white man pushing white supremacy. That's why they would cut off our penis when they would lynch us. Penis envy. They're afraid of the black man because of our potency, because of our manliness. Because when you look at the black man, he's a real man. He's strong. So then they would have us as mandingos fighting one another. That's why even today, they want to be the heavyweight champion of the world. They can't find a white man to do it. So they tried to turn a black man, Frank Bruno, into a white man. <laughs> they, called him the, they called him the great white hope. They, they're desperate. We're not allowed to play golf. Why are we not allowed to play golf? Because we are inferior. We can't play the game. But let one black man into golf. <laughs> And all of a sudden there's a tiger in the woods. <laughs> and he he doesn't just play golf, he becomes the master. We're not allowed to play tennis. Let black people into tennis. We go straight to Wimbledon and win it in 1935. A black woman. Now, Venus and Serena, they run out of opponents. They have to play each other. The white people cannot compete on an even playing field. They let us into athletics. You can't run like us. You let us into any field of endeavor, we dominate it. So they feel, and they become very afraid of anything that goes contrary. And so every time a black man stands up for black people, Martin Luther King, shot down. Malcolm X, shot down. Patrice Lumumba, shot down. Steve Biko, shot down. Everyone, Nelson Mandela, they locked him up for 27 years. We can count back 400 years of the most brutal treatment. Look, they took my name. My language, my culture, they killed my mother, my father, denied me religion, disallowed me to read or write for over 300 years, reduced me to the level of an animal where they branded me on my chest, branded me on my buttocks with a branding iron, and they called me three-fifths of a human being in the American Constitution. Is that the act? of a human being or the act of a devil it's for you you answer it we're, we're not we're, oh just calling white people names no we're just going on the basis of what we have experienced black people were taught to hate ourselves That's right. even to this day many of my people suffer from self-hatred and you will see us trying to change our skin color when i was born in the 50s in Jamaica, they would take, you know, like my nose, the, the, the mothers would sometimes take the nose and try to squash it, to hate self, that they felt that the baby was ugly if it had thick lips and broad nose and black skin. And so this is the 
in order to counterbalance that degree of self-hatred, there had to be a teaching given by Elijah to black people that would allow us to fall in love once again with ourselves. See, because look, I know you're a wise man, and so you mustn't, you must understand that I'm a baby in wisdom, but I'm not a fool. And he's saying here today, that the Caucasian is in fact the whole the oldest group on the planet. I beg to differ. Look, look, one of the most famous anthropologists is Professor Leakey. And when Professor Leakey went in search of the origin of human beings and human species, he didn't stop very long in Europe. He went to Africa. And the oldest bones and the oldest human beings to this day that you call Zinzanthropus, using the Latin meaning Zin and Xanthropus, meaning a black man, that oldest man, they say, is millions of years old. You went back and found one even older than that. You called her Lucy, a black woman. Go ahead. And every, every sensible historian, anthropologist today agrees that the black man is the father of human beings. Even your geneticist, Mr. Mendel. Go ahead, go ahead. You have Mendel's law. Go ahead. Mendel says that light eyes are recessive. Light skin is recessive. You can take the recessive, the dark skin is dominant, the dark Dark eyes are dominant. You can take the recessive from the dominant, but you can't get the dominant from the recessive. This is Mendel's law. And so, all of your scientists have proved that you can't look. Black is not even a color. That's right. Black is the mother and father of all colors. And if you want a baby, even if the woman is a white woman, the baby has to come out of the triple darkness of her womb. And this is the origin of all life. Within the black, you have the whole color spectrum. But in white, you can, two white people laying down together, they can only produce white. But two black people in darkest Africa can lay down together and produce albino with blonde hair and blue eyes. That's right, teach Muhammad. This happens all the time. And so we need to really get these facts correct today and understand that as as gray as your hair, as your hair is, you are listening to your father today. Teach Muhammad. This is daddy talking. Teach. And, um, and we mustn't turn. God, this is true. I'm not mocking. The white man, he came into what he called a new world. Teach Muhammad. And so all of a sudden you started to name things. Teach Muhammad. So that's why you called it America. Based on, uh, what was his name? Um, Amerigo Vespucci, a Caucasian. That's why you called it Africa. Based on the European explorer called, explorer called Afrikanus. You went into America, you called it New York. That's right. Because it was new to you. New England. You call it New England. That's right. You call it New Zealand. You call it New Found Land. Because it was new to you. But to us, we were already there. That's why we're called Aboriginal. From. Ab, meaning abstracted from the Father. Muhammad. From God Himself. Original, meaning the first. But you won't find Caucasian people calling themselves Aboriginal. Anywhere on the planet, teach because you're the new man, Paul Newman. From one blood came all human beings, but we produced you from us. Look at this even the word human, you, you've heard the term uh, of a darker hue. Human, meaning a dark man, human, a man of color. That's why the top soil of the earth is called humus. It is the dark organic material that gives life to the earth. Whenever you take away the dark organic material or you denature it, you're left with white granulated sand. Desert. You want to see those of us who think that white something to glorify it. No, no, no. It's a it's a psychological thing with white people where you want to find your place and your scientists and your historians they spend so much time asking the question where do we come from because they are puzzled as to your origin look at the chinese look at the asians look at the black people all of us got dark eyes all of us got black hair the only one 
on the planet who's got ginger hair, blonde hair, brown hair, gray hair, brunette. You are the one that's gone around the world making everything based on color. You were the one who went into Australia. You were the one who went into South Africa. You were the one who went into Asia and classified people and things based on color. So that's why this man, Yakub, he wasn't a madman. He wasn't a mad scientist. He was a good scientist and the Caucasian person is a person who is a person who is anti-nature. That's why when the sun comes out, I'm energized. Me and the sun, we got a relationship. I love the sun. I don't need no sunscreen. I don't get cancer from the sun. Me and the sun have got a good relationship. I love it and it loves me. But white people, you got to put sunblock on. You got to hide from the sun because now you you might get a little melanoma. Part of me on you, that means you're dead. You know, a lot of people wonder how Dubai became a very big, famous and rich city. You see, if you are if you're comparing with Nigeria, listen to this. Nigeria has oil before then Dubai. It's a history. They are more rich than us. They have agriculture. They have mining. They have everything you name it they have it am i right or wrong when you have a true leadership which we have we have nothing but we have everything because we have the right leadership that's the only thing you need a right leader for your country not corruption that's what brings your country at the top you don't need anything we don't have we want a water we don't have agriculture we don't have mining uh, that's quite interesting. And that's Sheikh Mohammed. Number one. He doesn't know number two. He needs only number one. He says, I don't know. There's no number two in my book. Only number one. Ah, yeah, he doesn't ride in a convoy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. No, he doesn't because everybody loves him. We love our leaders too. Thank you. Thank you.